Yang Chen, our main protagonist, leans against his car with a packing box in his hand. Chen was very saddened as he was having a bad day. He had just lost his job that day. He wonders why such unfortunate situations always happen to him. After dwelling a little on the loss of his job, he decides to move on no matter how difficult it might be. His way of moving on was going back to car hailing, a system put in place to offer a form of transportation order. He enters his car and positions his phone in his front. The car hailing app informs him of an order for transportation a kilometer away from him. He accepted the project after which the app described the location he has to go. In the car hailing system, one will surely meet a lot of people, strange people. Yang Chen soon arrived at the location and called his client to inform the person of his arrival. The client simply told him she would still take 20 minutes to finish up her makeup. His expression shows he was not very happy. Little did he know that the meeting was the start of a new change in his life even though there are still people who did not like him. The lady inside the vehicle complained about his service. She complained about his driving that seemed unprofessional and also that he was going too slow. As she gets out of the car, she threatens to give him a bad review as well as get him arrested by the police. Ironically, the car hailing app congratulates him for successfully completing the mission, and there was no negative comment at all. As a result of a job well done, the system rewarded him and instructed him to go to the management office of Haiti Financial Building the next day to get the reward, transfer letter, real estate certificate, and other documents. Yang could not help but be surprised by this. We are soon introduced to a changed Yang Chen. He is now a wealthy and popular individual. He is described as the king of entertainment circles and medical skills. Not only that but also people call him investing god, artistry talented and possess various and all kinds of skills. He had become a king with people working for him as well as he being in control of a lot of things. The cause and source of Chen's dismissal from his office and sudden wealth is now fully revealed. We are taken back to the day that he was dismissed from his place of work. Chen used to work for Zing Long, Yin City Financial Building. On the day he was fired, he had been arguing with his boss, Zhang Jingyan, about a project he had planned all by himself but was not given the permission to sign his name and get a commission. His boss reminded him that he works for the company and whatever he produces belongs to the company which was under his control. Yang was offended by this as he felt that the company was like a vampire draining them of their hard work. After leaving the boss's office, he went to his desk and started packing. His office colleague warns him against going against their impulsive boss. They reminded him of his girlfriend who has a paralyzed dad that needed to be taken care of. He took a look at his and his girlfriend's picture and was reassured by the car and the house his parents had left him after passing away. He packs out of the office with the intention to start an online car hailing service. As he was approaching his car in the company garage his day got worse. His girlfriend broke up with him over a text message. Her reason being that she can't be with someone who cannot appropriately take care of her, and that she had gone to follow her dreams. He tried calling her but was not accessible. We are taking to where he decides to go for the car hailing system. He arrived at the location for his first order and realized that the customer was just applying her makeup and would need a period of 20 minutes to finish up. Infuriated by this action, Jang lashed out at her. He told her to get ready next time before ordering a cab. The lady asked for more minutes requesting he must not cancel the order else she would give a bad review. Not caring about her threat, he cancelled the order. True to her word, the lady left an awful review. Suddenly, there was a magical lady who appeared before him. The magical lady confirms that the host has been detected and the binding condition meets. The lady explained to him that a bad review also has a reward and needs confirmation to get it. She explained that as long as the binding was successful there will be rewards for every time he gets a bad review. Although he still needs a few good ones to remain in the business. The reward ranges from money, properties, luxury cars to skills. He immediately accepts the binding. The magical lady kissed him as the binding. The bad review system and the host are successfully bounded. She advised him to look for bad reviews. Since Jang had received a complaint, he was rewarded with a 28% stake in a very luxurious hotel All Island Hotel Group making him the second largest shareholder. The owner has invited to dine together where all transfer of equity agreement will be delivered to the owner. Jang was surprised to see the reward being given immediately. She wishes him good luck. Almost immediately, he received an order request which he accepted immediately as the location was the All Island Hotel Group. This is an opportunity for him to visit the island. He met the lady, his client by the roadside and inquired from her if she is the passenger with order ID 8043, she replied to him with a yes, and he asked her to enter the car. When she enters, they begin the silent ride. 
on their way to the location. Wang Jiayi, who is the passenger, asks him why he keeps peeking at her through the mirror, referring to her by name as Beauty. He asks her if she doesn't know how to drive, telling her that he isn't looking at her through the window, but he is looking at the road condition behind him. Feeling insulted by the question about her driving skill, she gets angry. She asks him why he insulted her with that kind of reply when all she did was ask him a question. In retaliation to his remark about her, she told him he's very slow when it comes to driving and has no driving skills. Rather than exchanging words with her, with a smirk on his face he stepped on the accelerator and started to drive a very full speed which began to scare Wang. Knowing fully well he is driving roughly because of the way she has spoken to him, she begins pleading for her life to which he still refuses to drive any slower. Almost in tears, she held support inside the car so she wouldn't fall. She pleaded with him, acknowledging that she was really wrong. She starts screaming for help. She gets very scared that he would kill them with that speed rate. Calling him brother, she continues to plead with him. He asks her who her brother is, and he tells her it is only if he doesn't end up in an accident that she will leave that car alive. But he tells her that he can at least let her go alive if she calls her by the term daddy. He was clearly enjoying himself as he tortures her and plays with her emotions. She reluctantly calls him daddy still in tears and shock. He comments that she is now behaving like a good girl, and he steps on the brake to allow her out of the car when they arrive at her destination. He tells her that they have arrived at all the island hotels and he should get out of the car. She comes out in tears and calls him a bastard. She tells him to wait and see if she wouldn't give him a bad review, then lays a complaint about him before calling the police to arrest him for dangerous driving. She indeed lays a complaint about him, and Yang gets a notification on his bad review portal that he has gotten another bad review. The portal congratulates him and tells him that he will be rewarded with the ownership of the Zing Long Finance Building. This is the building he was formerly working at and has just been sacked from. His system tells him that he should go to the management office of the Zing Long Finance Building to receive the transfer letter, real estate certificate, and the other documents of the building. He jumps happily. He is glad that he is getting the Zing Long Finance Building because that is the same building he used to work in before. He feels he can now settle the old grudges that he has with his former boss, Zhang, happily. He walks into the hotel like a boss and with a shoulder high. The first person he came across was very shocked to see him in the building. She is Zhang Wang, the same lady who he had almost killed in the car. She assumes that he is stalking her and asks him how he could dare to follow her around. She says that he really has a lot of nerve. He takes a very good look at her before proceeding to mock her. He calls her a good girl and even refers to himself as a third person calling himself her father. This he said referring sarcastically to what had happened earlier. He tells her that he has a spot reserved for himself in the building for a long time. The receptionist of all island hotels attends to him. She tells him that his seat is at table 8 and their staff will take him to his seat. Before he goes there, the attendant hands over a document to him, and he sees the equity agreement. The attendant tells him it's another document that their manager would like to pass on to him, so he should keep the document. She tells him that she will take him to his table now. Wang sees that he is a person of great status, and she tells him that even if she had misunderstood his intention in the car, she would never forgive him for what he has done to her but Jang could only care less. The attendant takes him to his table and tells him his meal will soon be ready. Wang waits there as well. She is in the building for a blind date and she is waiting for her date. Her date eventually arrives, and she asks him if he is Mr. Zhang Wang. He stretches his hands toward her and confirms to her he is Zhang. He also asks to confirm if she is Miss Wang, who has been introduced to him by the director. He politely asks her to take her seat. Looking at them, Yang could defer that they are on a blind date. As he sits and waits for the manager of his company while sipping out of his coffee, he sees his ex-girlfriend, Zhao Feifei, together with her best friend, Chen Xin, coming inside of the hotel with a man old enough to be their father in their midst. The duo were each clinging to the arm of the man. The pot-bellied old man is Master Li. He was amazed at the coincidence. Chen Xin cites him as well and requests permission from Master Li to go say hi to him under the pretense that he's a friend. She knows quite well the relationship between them and felt he was up to no good since he could not be in the building for any other reason. She goes to Yang and confronts him. She proceeds and tells him that he is going too far and he has broken up with Zhu Feifei already, and therefore he should leave the poor girl alone, referring to her friend. She asks him what he is doing at that hotel asking him if he is there to cause havoc. However, he tells her that he isn't going that low with them. He says he has no interest in gold digging girls and asks if they aren't ashamed that they are in their early 20s and they are spending time with men in their 40s and 50s who are old enough to be their father. 
he tells her how sorry he feels for their parents. Chan Xin gets angry. She screams at Jiang Chen making Li realize that the conversation isn't going on like a conversation between friends. He moves closer to ask Chen Xin what is going on. She assures him that all is okay and he should go sit down. She informed him that she will meet them soon. Li feels concerned. He says he can see they are having a bad conversation, and he doesn't think it is okay. So he asks Yang who he is. Yang introduces himself as Zhu Feifei's ex-boyfriend. He further tells Li that Zhu Feifei had just broken up with him on that very day. He asks Li when he linked up with his girlfriend and asks him if he isn't a male mistress. Li concentrates on Zhu Feifei and asks her if Yang is right. She tells Li that she hasn't just broken up with Yang. She claims that she has broken up with him for a long time but he did not just agree. She includes that he is the fool that is just realizing the breakup on that day. She tells Li that she has told him she isn't interested and he has just refused to agree. She says that she indeed broke up with him again on that very day, but she didn't expect that he would follow her to the All Island Hotel. She says that Yang is just there to bully her. All this she said with much innocent and tears in her eyes making Li. Li holds her by her neck and sweetly laughs at her telling her it was not her fault and would get him out of the building. He gradually walks towards and asks Yang to leave. He tells Yang that he is pestering his girlfriend and that he is annoying. If only they know that Yang isn't there for any of them. Li feels it's about time he shows Yang that he is his boss at that place. He calls the waiter telling her that she should call the company manager, Manager Chen, because he wants to speak to him. The waiter does as she has been instructed immediately. Zhu Feifei also feels she has an upper hand in the situation on ground. She speaks to Yang asking him if he should just leave the hotel now that the matter is still minor because if he doesn't leave immediately he will have to suffer for it later. Yang doesn't listen to them. He keeps drinking his tea without being bothered about all that they are saying. Wang Jiang who is witnessing the whole scenario looks at him and calls him a weirdo in her mind. She wonders how the event will eventually play out. She says that since the situation has come to that which she has been trying to avoid, she will also like to see how the situation will end. I'm sure you want to see how it will end too. Wang's date. Mr. Zhang sees that she is interested in what is going on around Zhang Chen's table. He asks Wang if Wang knows Yang. Wang tells her date that she doesn't know him, but she just came to the building through his car hailing taxi. She narrates her experience with her date. She tells him that not only did Yang have a very bad attitude but he also almost killed her by driving recklessly. He also ensures she calls him daddy before he allows her to leave the car. So she got out of the car and gave him a bad review. Her date, Zhang, gets angry and he asks how Yang could dare do something that horrible to a stranger. He says that Yang is too much and he deserves to be dealt with. He tells Wang to remain on their chair, and he will go over to Yang and teach him a lesson. However, Wang drags him back. She tells him that he doesn't have to be that impulsive, but he refuses her words and still went ahead to Zhang's table as well to deal with him even though Wang had told him in the purest of heart. He gets to Yang, calls him brother and confirms from him whether Wang came inside his online taxi, and he bullied the poor girl. Yang doesn't bother denying what he has done. He doesn't even feel like he has done anything wrong. He looks at Jiang with annoying looks telling him that he really did all that and inquired to know who he was. Jiang introduces himself as Jiang Long telling him that he is Wang's blind date, and that if he tells Wang that he is sorry and calls her aunt, he will spare him from the punishment of his offense. He continues and tells Yang that if he doesn't do as he has been asked, he will have him thrown out of the hotel immediately. However, Yang simply drinks his coffee with so much attitude asking Jiang who his father is. Well, when your father is really something, you will really find it easy to answer the question of who your father is. So the question doesn't pose so much of an issue to Jiang. He tells Yang that his father is the chairman of Tianmu Investment, and he is also about to invest in the All Island Hotel Group. This he says with a lot of boldness. He threatens that he can inquire and asks the hotel to blacklist Yang from the hotel if Yang doesn't do as he has commanded him to do as he is capable of withdrawing his father's investment in the company. Yang is now faced with two opposing individuals who want him out. He tells Zhang that, just like Li, they are both there to show him what they are really made of making him very interested. The manager eventually arrives, running at Mr. Li. He asks Li why Li didn't tell him in advance that he wants to come over for dinner. This indicates that Li was a shotgun to the company. Then when he sees Zhang Tu, he recognizes Zhang. He compliments that it is like that day is a great day as two great people are at the hotel at the same time to eat their dinner. Li explains to Chang the manager that the day is his girlfriend's birthday, and they have decided to come for dinner at the spur of the moment. However when they arrive at the hostel, they find his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend at that same hotel and he is pestering her so much that they can't even eat in peace. He tells Chang that he hopes Chang will help them get rid of the pest in the hotel referring to Jack. 
Jiang also lays his complaint. He tells Chang that he has come there for a blind date with his date, but he found out that his date was bullied on her way to that hotel by the skinny Yang. He says he is also in favor that Chang should get rid of Yang because he doesn't want to see Yang again. Chang knows how much both clients mean to the company. They are great clients of the company. Chang is more than ready to send away anyone who is a hindrance to them. He tells them that whoever offends them will surely be taken care of. They both immediately point the accusing finger at Yang telling Chang that he is the one who had offended them. Yang is intense, he understands he has control of that situation. And whoever they are, they are below his feet as the second highest equity shareholder of that company. As they point at him, Chang recognizes him as their new shareholder that the board had just sent out to announce. He knows he can't favor Zhang and Li over their company's new shareholder. Instead of commanding the security to send Yang away from the hotel, he calls the security to send both Li and Zhang away from the hotel. While Li and Zhang are still shocked, he commands the security that they shouldn't let Li and Zhang into the hotel again even in the future as they are no longer welcome in the hotel. Li asks him again if he understands what he is saying. He asks if he has heard right. He reminds Chang that he is their hotel's vegetable food supplier. Zhang also brags about his family's rights. He asks Chang if they are sure that they no longer need his family's investment. To make them understand exactly what is going on, he needs to let them know who they have offended. He tells them he will like to formally introduce them to Mr. Yang Chen, the second largest shareholder of the All Island Hotel Group. Yang sits majestically on the chair, still sipping his coffee. He comments that Mr. Chang really knows his stuff. The statement about Yang's position blows over everyone's heads. Shocked was an understatement to how they feel. He is indeed the second largest shareholder. Wang wonders what is going on. She had just met Yang when he was driving an online taxi. She wonders how the second largest shareholder of a great company like the All Island Hotel Group is driving an online taxi. She concludes he is just a rich kid who feels like experiencing all that life has to offer to him. She feels that is the reason why he was that rude to her and why he speaks so viciously. Young doesn't want to let go of his opportunity to shine too. He tells Li that he won't be needing to supply vegetable food to their hotel in the future. And for Zhang, their hotel will no longer need his family's investment, and they won't accept such an investment. He commands Chang to throw everyone there away because he doesn't want to see them. Fei Fei also sees how rich he is now. The major reason she had broken up with him before was that he was poor, and it seems like things have now changed for the better for him. She regrets her decision asking herself what she was thinking when she decided to break up with him. She thinks of what to do. He is now richer than she expects, and she doesn't want to let things go like that, and she considers if it's possible for her to beg for his forgiveness and go back to him. She feels it's better to be ashamed of that place than allow such a rich man to leave her life. She immediately gets on her knees to beg him. She tells him that she knows she was wrong when she broke up with him, and all she had just allowed Lee to do to her was hold her hand. She hasn't allowed him to have any intercourse with her and she has nothing with him. She begs Yang and tells him that her body and her mind still belong to him and she has never left him. Her best friend, Kao Zin, doesn't want her to have that kind of fortune again, so she counters everything Zhu Feifei has said. She tells Yang that Zhu Feifei isn't a good woman for him and Zhu Feifei is just a young girl who loves vanity. She also wants him to date her, so she tells Yang that he should look at her. She is a young girl who is still clean, and he should come for her instead. He looks at them ridiculously, looking at how their stupid friendship ended, and says that they are about to start a bitch fight. Lee also knows his business will suffer so much loss if he stops supplying vegetables to a company as high as big as the All Island Company, so he tries to apologize too. He tells Yang that he didn't know that Zhu Feifei is Yang's ex-girlfriend. He says that if he had known, even if God had given him a hundred guts, he wouldn't have used the guts to compete with a man as great as Yang. They are all filled with regrets, and they all try to pacify him in ways that matter to them, but he doesn't care. He hits his cup of tea on the table, asking manager Chang why he hasn't done as he has commanded and kicked those people out of the hotel. Chang immediately heeds to his command. He calls out to security and asks them what their job is, and they should do their job by sending those people out of the hotel. Chen Zio still struggles with security. She tells him that she can explain what has happened to him. Li also screams and begs that he is wrong and Yang should forgive him. Chang feels reluctant to send Zhang away because he felt scared of what might be done to him if he did so. He whispers to Yang that Zhang is the son of the chairman of Tainam Investment, but Yang refuses to accept. He says that the investment won't get past the board as long as he is against it, and he asks what Chang is afraid of Zhang for. Since Yang has reassured Chang that there is nothing Zhang can do, Chang calls security to get rid of Zhang, too. He tells security they should blacklist Zhang and never allow him into their company again. 
Zhang refuses to accept that something that horrible can happen to a noble like him. He screams at the security and tells them not to touch him. He tells Chang that Chang should get his facts straight and he reminds everyone there that he is Zhang, the son of the chairman of Tainmu Investment. He says that a mere second largest shareholder of All Island Hotel Group isn't someone that they at Tainmu will even put in their sight. He drags his date and tells her they should eat at a different place. Yang has evil thoughts. He feels he should have made Zhang go through humiliating things, and despite all that he has made him go through, Zhang didn't forget to call on Wang and even tell her that they should attempt eating at a different restaurant. He assumes that Zhang has taken a liking to Wang, and if he is unable to hurt Zhang by what he has done at that hotel then he will try to steal Wang from him so he will see if Zhang will still be as proud of himself as he is. He then calls out for Wang. He asks her who she is on a blind date with. He plucks some flowers and tells her that he has flowers with him and she should sit and let them have a conversation. He says it seems like he had scared her with his jokes in the car earlier. He proceeds by saying he would like to apologize to her for the rude things he has done for her, so she should wait with him. Wang also considers going for him. She feels that since she is just going on a blind date with rich people, won't it be better for her to choose someone with a good personality and style? She turns and goes to meet Yang. She tells him that he seems sincere and he really wants to make amends, so she will give him a chance to make amends for what he has done since he is talking to her sincerely. She goes to take the flowers, leaving behind her real blind date. It looks like Zhang's composure evades him. He gets angry. He screams at Wang, asking her if she knows what she is doing at all. He reminds her that he is in that situation with Yang because he was trying to support and defend her and now she is leaving him for Yang who she dislike means that she is insulting him. She reminds him that he didn't do all he has done for her, but for him to save his face. She tells him that she didn't tell him to start a fight with Yang, and she reminds him that she even dragged him back so he wouldn't go to fight. But he had done there to pretend, and he failed. He gets angry at her, and he reminds her that it is Yang who is in a better position than him, and since he can't beat Yang, he thinks he can beat her. He tells her that if she dares sit down and have dinner with Yang, then she is shaming him. He asks her what she thinks will happen if she shames him. Instead of allowing her to listen to what Zhang has to say, Yang holds Wang by her back and tells her to sit down. He tells her that if a fly feels like he can disturb her, then he will get rid of the fly on her behalf so she can eat in peace. With all pride, she sits down and tells him thank you. Angrily, Zhang lifts his hand on her, but before his hand gets down to her, Yang holds Zhang's hands. He tells him it is uncouth for a man to lay his hand on a woman. Chang calls security, and he tells them that they should chase Zhang out of their hotel. They get there, and they hold Zhang with their hands. Before he leaves the hotel, he tells Wang that he wouldn't spare her for what she has done to him. He tells Chang that he will go back home and tell his father what they have done to him, and he is sure his father wouldn't let them go with what they have done to him. Yang returns to the table, and he pours a bottle of wine for Wang. He decides to formally introduce her to him. He tells her that his name is Yang Chen, and it is his pleasure for him to have that dinner with her. She also introduces herself. She apologizes for the bad review that she has kept for him and tells him that she will remove the bad review immediately after that date so they can both have a fresh start. However, he tells her not to worry. He says that the bad review will be his reminder of their special encounter and she doesn't need to remove it. He asks her to join him in the drinks, and they cheer. Other guests at the hotel who have witnessed what has happened talk and gossip about him. They feel what had happened was arrogant of the rich, and it was bad that he had directly snatched the blind date of the person who had picked a fight with him. The man sits and says that it is really a good thing to have money. Wang tries to know the level of riches of her present date. At least she had just left a man with generations of riches. She asks Yang what his family does. He tells her that his family had died several years ago, and he is now a car-hailing driver. He asks her what she does too. And she tells him that her hometown is Sioux City, and she currently works at a luxury shop. And the reason she had come to that blind date is that she wants to stay in that city. He doesn't feel bad that she is depending on a man before she can have a good life. He tells her that everyone has the right to pursue a better life and it is not a shame that a woman should rely on a man to give her a better life. Xiao, he feels that compared to Fei Fei, his ex-girlfriend, Wang is a little more sincere. She isn't the type who only only runs for money. She tells him that she thinks he is right about what he has said and asks that they keep drinking. As they drink, she asks him if he knows the reason she was so prejudiced against him when she got into the car. She explains to him that she had two blind dates today and the first person whom she met was very nice to her. However, as they get to know each other better, he tried to kiss her when it was dark in the cinema. She asks for his opinion about the issue and he tells her he thinks the major reason she felt like that towards the man is that she didn't just like him. 
he tells her that if she had taken a fancy to him before he did that act, there was no way she could have refused to kiss him. She has another opinion about the issue. She feels that is not the case with her, and it has nothing to do with being good-looking or not being good-looking. She asks him what kind of person kisses a girl on their first meeting. If she has allowed something like that, she is sure her second meeting with him will be more outrageous. However, he explains to her that kissing has nothing to do with the first or second meeting. He says that kissing depends on the atmosphere and the feeling they both have at that moment. He says that it is even possible to do more things on the first meeting as long as the atmosphere is right and the feeling is there. She doesn't want to believe that he means all that he is saying to her. She asks him how anyone can be willing to kiss another person on their first meeting. He stands up, he walks towards her and goes nearer to her lips. He plants a romantic kiss on her lips. He tells her that she should enjoy her meal and put the bills for the meal on his tab. He tells her that he is going to room 1208 to rest. She holds her lips. She can't believe that she has just allowed a random man to kiss her. She asks herself why she didn't resist him from kissing her, maybe he is right about kisses. She thinks about the fact that he has told her his room number, and she wonders if he had purposely told her the room number so he could invite her to his room. She feels ashamed about what she is thinking about. She couldn't imagine that she would feel that way about a random man. Meanwhile, in room 1208, Young goes inside and has a shower. After his shower, he comes out of the bathroom holding a towel. He hears a knock on the door, and he just goes to open the door forgetting that he is with an open chest and just a towel on his waist. When he opens the door to her, she immediately drags him closer and plants her kiss on his lips. She calls her name, but he doesn't resist her. He holds her on her waist, and when she finishes, her face turns red as she is overwhelmed by the entire situation. His eyes get to her chest, he sees the two open buttons around her chest, and he comments that it is so hot. He realizes that she had drunk too much when he left her, and he tells her that she is drunk. However, she really feels like touching him, she keeps touching him, and she touches his chest, and she sees his eight-pack abs. She really wants to feel that abs on her hands, and she says she can't help it. She tells him that he shouldn't blame her for what she is doing because he is the one that started it first when he kissed her. He carries her in his hands like a baby, and he enters the room. He puts her on the bed, and he holds her body as he plants another kiss on her lips. She screams and reacts back to all his touch. I'm sure you can assume how that night ended. The following day, he is still at the hotel. He wakes up late because of the night business. He checks beside his bed, and he sees that she is no longer there. He wonders if she has gone. He figures that she has gone, and he also tries to leave the bed. He sees that there is a blood stain on his bed. Blood stain after having intercourse with a girl has just one meaning. He really can't believe that is what is happening. He wonders if he is the one who has deflowered her, and he finds that she has left a letter for him in the room. He quickly goes to check the letter. In the letter, she tells him that he did well the night before and she is very pleased with him so she has decided to give him a service fee of 3000 for his service, and the fee is on the table. He can also see the money under the letter. She tells him that he shouldn't go out at all for the month. Instead, he should use the other days in the month to get his strength back. And when she gets paid the next month, she will come back and pack him in for a night again. He wonders what is going on, and he couldn't help but comment that women are very interesting. That day, he has just a purpose which is for him to go to his former work building, the Zing Long Finance Building, and claim his new property. He goes there and he meets with the receptionist. He introduces himself as Yang Chan telling her that he is there to collect his things. He is immediately directed to the manager, Manager Chan Chui, who welcomes him and introduces himself as the manager of the building office. Chan Chui tells him that he should give him a moment and he will get back to him with the property documents. The Chan Chui returns with a folder. He tells Yang that all his things are inside the folder already. He tells him that he can check the folder out and that if he has any problem, he can ask immediately and they will fix it for him. He tells Chen that he doesn't have to worry. He says that he knows Chen is a very disciplined person and he isn't someone who will mess with his things, so he is rest assured that everything is going the way they should. He tells Chen that he pleads with them all at the management of the company, and that they should continue to help him manage the building. Chen calls all the other staff. He tells them to come over and welcome Yang with him. They all bow to welcome him. He greets them all, and he tells them that they should all go back to work. It's time for him to ensure he punishes his former employer. He asks Chen about his former company telling him that he wants to know more about the people that rented floor 15. Chen asks him to hold on, and he checks the computer to bring out all the information about the people who rented floor 15. They see that the occupant is Zhang Jingan, and his contract in that building expires by the end of the month. 
He tells Chen that it has just happened that their lease is coming up, and he really needs to brag about his accomplishment. So he tells Chen that they should go up and talk with Zhang, and Chen says yes. They leave for his former company. As they are about to get there, Chen tells Yang that he is sorry, but he has an appointment with another client who is coming in to ask about their rent that day. So Chen couldn't enter into the office with Yang, and Yang tells Chen that he can pick up his call and he will enter the office on his own first. He enters the finance company, and he meets his former colleagues. He greets them and tells them that it looks like they are all busy with work. They are shocked that he had the audacity to come back to that office, considering how he had left. One of his colleagues who are concerned about him comes to meet him. He was him why he had resigned and tells him that they should go and apologize to Mr. Zhang and manager Lai together. He appreciates his colleague's kind gesture, but he says he isn't there to apologize. He says he is there for his salary which Zhang didn't pay him before he left. He screams that they should call Zhang for him so Zhang can pay him what he owes him. He shouts that Zhang should stop hiding in the office like a coward and he should come out. Zhang comes out with pride. He asks why Yang is shouting at his office and asks him what kind of place he thinks he is. He asks him if he thinks he is at a place where he can shout mindlessly. Yang speaks back at him. He says that he is shocked that Zhang came out and he had thought Zhang would be too scared to come out. He asks Zhang if Zhang has the commission he owes him. Zhang also wants him to come back to work because he knows how much the company is enjoying from his good work. He says that he will give Yang the commission he wants but Yang should first be a good boy and return back to work. He says he would give Yang about 10,000 for 10 months and as long as he closes at least one single deal from that month till forever. However, that isn't their initial promise. Yang says Zhang is talking like a fart. He reminds Zhang that he clearly promised him a 20% commission on a successful case without any strings attached. Zhang refuses to admit fault. He asks Yang where the proof of that promise is. He asks if he has any proof or if he is just deciding based on what he remembers that he was promised. He mocks Yang asking him that what if he was promised that he would work for free for the rest of his life, will he like to redeem that promise? Yang claims that everyone in the company was there when he made the promise. He says that everyone heard him when he said it, and the evidence is in everyone's mind. So Zhang asks the other workers in the room if any one of them heard that promise. No one wants to jeopardize their work because they want to be a witness of truth, so no one supports Yang. The first worker says that they didn't hear anything, and it must have been Yang who heard it wrongly. He looks at the workers. He wonders if none of them realize that what happened to him that day could happen to any of them next time. And it was just his turn that day. And it could be their turn soon. Another of his colleague tells him that Zhang has been extraordinarily kind to him. So he should hurry up and thank Zhang so he can come back to work. Zhang also feels proud of himself. He claims the only reason he is giving Yang a second choice is that he loves Yang's talent. And that's Yang's last choice. So Yang shouldn't be insensitive. He commands Yang to get back to his seat and get to work. He says he has to go downstairs and speak to the building management about renewing of the leases so he doesn't have time to waste with Yang. He claims he is doing a great job asking Yang if he thinks it's easy for him as a boss to support many employees. The other employee bow to him, and they tell him that they should all be grateful to Zhang for giving them a good platform for them to show their good talents. However, Yang doesn't feel like an employer is doing his employee a favor by paying them. He says it is really unreasonable that he came out to work just to earn money, but he can't even get the salary that he deserves, yet they want him to be grateful for finding a work platform. He tells them that he has recorded all they have said, and he will be filing for an arbitration right now. He claims he can't believe that the law won't be able to control Zhang. Zhang doesn't want that audio to leak anywhere. He screams and asks his employee to close the gate and grab Yang's phone. They go to the gate to close it, and when they do, Mr. Chen wonders what has happened in the office. He wonders if nothing has happened to his new boss. Zhang tells Yang that he will only allow him to leave there alive if he deletes the recording he has made. Filled with anger, Zhang takes one of his company's computers and breaks it hoping it will make Yang scared. He then pushes the accusation of breaking the computer on Yang. He tells Yang that everyone saw that he broke the company's computer, so his salary was deducted to pay for the computer he has broken. But Yang tells him that his recording is still going on and that what Zhang had just done has been recorded. He tells Zhang that there is no way he could escape from what he has done. He also explains that there is a feature on his phone which is called Cloud Backup. He asks Zhang if he doesn't understand that even if he deletes what is on the phone, everything there is still backed up in another place he can retrieve it from. Zhang realizes he is trapped. He calls Yang a lowlife, asking him how he dared to come to his office and record him. He says that Yang is so shameless. One of the workers who is supporting what Zhang has done wonders why Zhang is trying to have a conversation with Yang. 
He tells Zhang that there is no point talking with Yang and they can just beat him up, destroy the phone and even destroy the backup on the phone so that when the police arrive, they will say that Yang came to their office to smash their computer and they had to forcefully subdue Yang. It turns out that Chen is eventually done with his call. He starts banging on the door so they can open the door for him. Zhang goes to open the door to Chen and he wonders why Chen has decided to visit their company in person. He says that he was just about to come down and talk to Chen about how they can renew the lease. However, Chen tells him that he isn't there because of rent, and that he is there to see Yang. He asks them why they are locking the company's door in the middle of the day. He hopes that they haven't done anything to Mr. Yang. Zhang is shocked that Yang has a connection with Chen. He asks Chen which Mr. Yang he is talking about, but Chen asks him which other Mr. Yang it could be. He points to Yang, who is standing there, and says it's the same Yang he is referring to. He tells Zhang that Yang is the new boss of their building and asks if they are trying to do something bad to the new boss. Zhang exclaims in a very shocked manner. He couldn't believe his ears. Do Chen really mean that Yang isn't the new boss of their building? Chen enters the office, and he goes to meet his boss. He asks Yang what is happening in that office. He apologizes for being late and tells Yang that he shouldn't have taken the call in the first place. But Yang tells him that he is fine and he doesn't have to worry. He tells Chen that Chen has come at the right time. Zhang goes to meet Chen. He doesn't want to believe that Yang is really the new boss and asks Chen what he means by the new boss of their building. Chen explains to him that, for the records, Yang has paid $2 billion in full to buy that property, and he is now the bona fide owner of the property. He explains further to Zhang that Yang is now in charge of the property, and he can do anything he wants with it. The staff is shocked. Some of them feel that Yang really spent over $2 billion on a property, and they wonder why he had come to work at that office in the first place. They feel that he has just come there to experience the life of a rich kid. They remember that he had left the office just the day before, and the following day he bought the entire building. And they conclude that what Yang has done is a clear sign of revenge. The manager of the finance company who had suggested that Zhang beat Yang up doesn't want to believe it either. He knows what can happen to him if it is true that Yang owns the entire company. He whispers to Chen's ears, asking him if it's possible that he had made a mistake. Maybe Yang just has the same name as his new boss, and it's not really Yang that is with them. Chen gets angry at them. He asks them if they are calling him blind and asks them that if he doesn't know who the boss of the company is as the manager, then who should know who the boss is? Zhang bows to apologize. He tells Yang that he shouldn't be angry and that everything that had just happened in that place was a misunderstanding. He holds Zhang's hands telling him that it is true that he has done something wrong and he should be punished. But instead of accepting his punishment, he is ready to double back the salary he is owing Yang, and he will pay it immediately so they can resolve the misunderstanding between them. Chen doesn't understand what is happening. He hasn't seen Yang in that building before, so to resolve his dilemma, he asks Yang if he has worked at that company before and if they are indeed owing him a salary. Yang replies affirmatively, and Chen gets angry. He directs his anger to Zhang, reminding him of the clause in their lease agreement. He tells him that it is written in their lease agreement that they must operate in good faith according to the law. Otherwise, they have the right to terminate the contract and claim got triple of the rent. He asks Zhang if he has forgotten that the clause existed in their contract. That makes Yang happier because it means he has another means of getting money. He brings out his phone, which he has used to record all Zhang has said to him, and he asks if there is indeed a clause like that and tells Chen to listen to the conversation between himself and Zhang. The conversation starts from when Zhang has told him that if he wants a commission, then it's fine, but he has to obediently come back to work and after every month. As long as he settles at least a single deal every month, he will be given 10,000. Zhang realizes that he has lost the whole fight. He begs Yang to listen to him and tells him that they should let bygones be bygones. He says he will give Yang triple of the commission that he is owing him, and Yang should please delete the recording so that they can settle the matter amicably. But Yang refuses his offer. He doesn't need money. He is already richer than he expects himself to be. He tells Zhang that he just wants the amount he is owed and nothing more than that. He tells Chen that the matter is left to the management of the building, and he is sure they will handle it in such a way that he will be satisfied with their work. He attempts to leave the office, and Chen bows to him, telling him not to worry and that he will do everything the way he wants and even more than he wants. Zhang screams that he should stop. Zhang tells him that he has already given him, and he has admitted defeat. He asks Yang why Yang wants to drive him to the end. He begs Yang to leave him a way out of the situation and asks Yang who he is sure that he won't fall into his hands in the future too. However, Yang tells him that he is the kind of person who never leaves his enemy with a way out. 
He says they if he felt a little bad about the company, he would have never left the company in the first place. So the fact that he left means he doesn't care about Jang and he won't give him a way out. He asks Jang to leave his way as he wants to leave. Jang asks him if he is sure that there is no way he can allow him out of that situation. But Yang wonders who he is to have that kind of conversation with him now. Jang realizes the only way he can evade responsibility is for that phone to be destroyed. So he commands all his staff that if anyone can snatch that phone away from Yang's hand, he will give the person 50,000 immediately. He expects that they will all jump at the deal, but that deal isn't enough for them to lose their integrity. He decides to increase the reward and says he will give them 100,000 cash immediately when he sees that no one stands up to do his demands. He adds that he will also double the salary of the successful person. Again, no one stands up to meet his demands. Yang laughs at him. He asks him if he thinks his words still have any credibility. He says that Jan can't even give him the commission he deserves for the orders he has made, and he thinks he will keep up for such a promise. He asks him if he thinks everyone is stupid enough to remove this mere buff. Yang holds his phone tightly in his hand so no one will collect it, and Chen takes his phone to call the management floor. Chen commands that all of the office staff and building security should come to the 15th floor immediately. About 10 minutes after Chen makes that call, all the workers on the first floor arrive on the 15th floor. They wonder what is going on and why their manager has called them into that room because such has never happened before. One of them expresses her concern to her colleague, who tells her she has no idea, but she also knows that all the security guards are at that same place. They wonder if the owner of the Jingyan advertisement, Zhang, offended their manager. Chen stands there courageously, asking to see which of the worker will go and touch Yang as Zhang has commanded them to. Zhang starts sweating. He never could have imagined that he would be in that situation just because he didn't give a staff commission. He regrets all that has happened, but it is too late. On the other hand, Yang is excited. He tells Chen that he will leave everything happening to Chen's hand as he wants to leave immediately. Again, Chen reassures him that he doesn't have to worry and he will ensure he will do everything beautifully the way he wants it to be done. Before leaving the office, Yang addresses the other staff. He knows that Zhang has equally been treating them horribly. He tells them that he is sure Z will be out of business that day. But while he is settling accounts with Zhang, why doesn't they hurry up and take revenge on whatever they want to give back to Zhang for how he has treated them? He tells them that if they don't take what they want to take now, when Zhang is fined and he goes bankrupt, they won't be able to take back what he is owing them, and they will get nothing. The first worker screams. He says that Zhang often forces them to work overtime and he doesn't pay them for the extra time they have worked. Another one says that Jang forces them to sign shady contracts. One says that he also deducts their wages without any reason. It turns out that it is his manager, Lai, who has always supported Jang in whatever he does, and it's also this same Lai that first brought the suggestion that they should beat Yang up. Jang can't watch and allow Lai to add to his punishment. He asks Lai not to throw stones at him as they do everything together, but Lai refuses. Lai says that he is against sin and he has always hated Lai, but he couldn't resist what Zhang is doing because he had to work under him. He tells Zhang that now that Yang is leading their charge to report him, he has to stand up against evil to the end. Yang knows how much they have both manipulated all the staff, he knows they are in it together, and he comments that Lai's leg is really fickle. Following everything that happens that day, Zhang's advertisement company is closed up. He stands in front of the closed office telling Yang that he has ruined him but he won't allow him to get away with it. But Yang tells him that he is the one who ruined himself, and he asks him not to blame anyone for his misfortune and says that there are rules in the world and he doesn't get to do whatever he wants to do just because he is the boss. Yang addresses the staff. He tells them that he is going to open an advertising agency soon and he will be using that same office. He asks them if they are interested in working under him, and they can come over if they are interested. The staff screams that they are interested since they are all already out of job. Lai also calls that he is interested in working under Yang. But Yang asks Jim if he is in Zhang's loyal slave. He says that there is no point in taking a loyal slave. He tells Lai to get out, telling him that he isn't welcome in the new company. Lai starts crying. He kneels to beg Yang telling him that if he goes to the labor arbitration with Yang to sue Zhang, will Zhang accept him then? Yang refuses. He tells him that even if he goes to kill Zhang, he still won't give him a job. He says that there is no bottom line for people like him, and there is no way he can keep him. He kicks him and tells him to get out of there. He addresses the other staff. He tells them that in half a month at the most, they can come back to work. From that moment on, the company management will be handed over to one of the staff, Zhu Ziali, and if any of them have an issue, they should go directly to Zhu Ziali. 
He tells them that the break he has given them is for them to have a holiday they should go home and rest for a while, and they should come back when they get the notice to come back so they can work properly. Su Ziali can't imagine that he has made her the manager. She asks him again to be sure she has heard right. She tells him that she doesn't have any experience working as a manager, and she fears that she may make a mistake. However, he is sure of his decision. He admonishes her that it is okay to be inexperienced and that as long as she learns the rope, she will be fine. She is glad about the position. She reassures him that she will listen to him well and she will study hard so she can do well in that position. They cheer themselves up so they can bow to their new boss. They bow to Yang and tell him thank you. He attempts to leave the company, and they all wave to him to greet him goodbye. And he greets them back, telling them that he will see them soon. He returns to the park so he can continue his car hailing services. He has executed the two revenge he has in mind, and with those revenge done, he feels it's the best time for him to return to work. He enters the car, and he gets a notification that he has a new order about 500 meters from his location. He feels the passenger is on his way to where he is going, and he can take her. He accepts the offer, and he starts going. He sees that the passengers are a young lady and a man. The lady seems familiar to him, and he says she looks like his college friend, Wang Lixin. He feels that he can't be a coincidence. When he gets nearer to them, he confirms that it is really his college friend. They take the cab, and when Wang enters the cab, she recognizes him, and she wonders how come he is the one riding the car. He greets her and tells her that it is indeed a coincidence that they are meeting again in that situation. He asks her if she is hanging out with her boyfriend. She feels it is about time that she introduces him to her partner. She introduces her partner as Jiang Jiankun, so that means he is encountering another Jiang. I mean, that will be the third Jiang he is encountering in that manhua. She tells Jiang that the driver is her university classmate, Yang Chen. She tells him that at that time, when they are at the university, he was the top student in their class, and he was also very handsome. In Jiang's head, the first thing he imagines is that Yang is very popular with the girls. She tells him yes and tells him that many girls in their school then liked Yang. It was just a pity that, as of then, he had a girlfriend. She concentrates on Yang again. She asks him if he has broken up with his then-university girlfriend. She feels it's a bad way to ask a man if he has broken up with his girlfriend. So she rephrases the question and asks him how far they are now. She asks him if he will end up getting married to her. However, he tells her that they have broken up, and she, therefore, comments that it was a shame that he turned down all the girls that wanted him in the university to pick his girlfriend and asks him if he regrets his decision now. He replies to her that he only turned her down and there is no point why she is bringing up that issue. She tells him that she didn't mean it in that way. She says that at least she has to thank him for turning her down because if he didn't turn her down in public and scolded her back then, she would be living a miserable life with him at the moment. Jiang realizes that Yang also humiliated his girlfriend in public. He asks her how he had humiliated her, and she explains that she was just 19 when she confessed her love to him, as at then, he could only reject her, but he couldn't humiliate her. Yang tries to change the conversation. He tells them that so much time has gone since that issue happened, and he has forgotten what he even said to reject her then. However, he tells her that if he had said something bad to her when they were having that conversation, he is very sorry and he is apologizing to her now. Zhang feels like he is poor. He tells him that since he is sincerely apologizing to her, his company is short of a clerk, and the job of the clerk is only to serve tea in the office and clean up. He asks Yang if Yang would like to stop driving the car and come work with him at his company. His girlfriend also feels proud. She tells him that her boyfriend is the planning manager of Heian Advertising Company, and if he goes to work under her boyfriend, she can ask her boyfriend to take care of him. Contrary to how they have thought he would jump at that offer, he rejects the offer without any doubt. He tells them that he thinks he is fine driving an online car and he doesn't need a job as a clerk. He feels the heat in the car, and he turns down the window. Wang shouts at him. She asks him why he is opening the window. She tells him that he should close the window immediately and turn on the air conditioning because she feels so hot. He tries to explain to her that the order didn't make it compulsory for him to turn on the air conditioning. He says that it is not impossible for him to turn on the air conditioning for them if they want, so they should say a few nice words to him, and he will turn on the air conditioning for them when he is happy with them. Zhang gets angry at him. He asks him what he is talking about, and says that if not for the fact that he was Wang's college classmate, he would have done hell to him a long time ago. He commands Yang to turn on the air conditioning and not make him angry. Wang tries to control her boyfriend, and she tells him not to be that impulsive with Yang because Yang is driving. She tells him that if he hits Yang, 
he will be finished when the car goes out of control because they may all die. She tries to speak to Young in a calm manner. She reminds him that they are old school friends and he should please turn on the air conditioning and she will pretend like what has happened didn't happen at all. She threatens that if he doesn't switch on the air conditioning, she will give him a bad review and also lay a complaint against him, and he can't blame her when she does so. He asks them if they think they can scare him with bad reviews, and he tells them that they can get out of his car if they know they aren't interested in riding in his car. Jang angrily tells him to pull over the car so they can stop. As he has asked, Young stops the car, Jang comes out of the car with his girlfriend, and he asks Young to also come out. He screams to Young to come out of the car, but Young refuses to come out. Jang hits the car's door, telling Young to come out, but Young remains inside the car. He tells them that he isn't going to get out of the car and that since it is hot, they can just take their there and enjoy the summer sun. He zooms off immediately without saying anything more. Jang runs after the car screaming that Young should stop, but Young doesn't respond to him. They don't know where they are. Wang asks her boyfriend if he knows which location they are. They look ahead, trying to see if there is a way they can get a ride. But they see that they are at a bridge over the river, and it seems like parking is not allowed on that bridge so they can't even ask anyone for a ride there. They both wonder what they should do. Angrily, Jang decides that he will give Yang a bad review and also lay a complaint. But if only they know that is the best way they can reward him, and that's what he is looking forward to. Jang believes that his bad review will put Yang out of work. Immediately after they give him the bad review, Yang receives a notification that he has gotten a new bad review. The system congratulates him for earning a bad review and rewards him with 2 million in cash. He laughs at them, saying that they must be having a nice time under the sun over a bridge in the middle of the day with no help coming for them. Suddenly, he checks their college class group, and he sees that Wang has left a message on the group. She says that she went out and ordered a car hailing, and when she entered, she saw it was Yang driving the car. She thought she could help him as a classmate, but he threw her out of the car on a bridge. All the students start asking several questions, some asking him why he is now doing car hailing, and others asking why he resigned from his advertising company. He decides to reply to them. He tells them that he had quit his job a few days ago and he is driving an online car for a while. He tells them that if they feel ashamed to be with him, they can pretend not to know him whenever they see him. He tells them that he will send the recording of the car trip to customer service for review, and he will also send the recording to the group so they can all hear what Wang did. Wang gets furious, she knows what she has done is bad, and she tells Jang that Yang has sent the recording to the group, and now everyone in the group is blaming her. They both walk on the bridge, and Jang promises that he is going to kill Yang. He tells Wang to send Yang a message that she is treating him to a party at the Hing Hotel on Sunday so they can lure him in and she will see how he is going to make him look bad in front of all their classmates. Wang supports the idea. She commends her boyfriend that he is smart and they can really get Yang. He gets a notification that Wang wants to invite him for a dinner at Ning Hotel to apologize for what she has done the last time. He says whether he will go to the party or not depends on how he feels on that day, and if he is in a good mood, he will attend the party. He says it is a beautiful day and he is sure that Wang and her boyfriend must be enjoying themselves on the bridge. He gets another order, and he goes to pick up his passenger. When he gets to the location, he calls that the car has arrived and asks the passenger where she is. It is raining, so she asks him how he expects her to get there in the rain. She tells him that he should come to where he is so he can get her there. He tells her to wait, saying that he will come there to pick her up. He picks up an umbrella from his car so he can go pick her up. He enters the rain to get to where she is, and when he gets there, he asks if she is his passenger, Ms. Zhang. At this point, we have to ask the author what he has with the name Zhang because this is the fourth Zhang that Yang will be meeting in the course of this story. He gets to her with an umbrella, but instead of her to humbly walk into the car with the umbrella, she complains that there is water on the ground and she can't walk across the water. She sits there expecting him to carry her to the car, but he refuses to do that. He tells her that he doesn't offer that kind of service except she is disabled. She asks him to look at her new shoes. She asks him if he knows how expensive those shoes are and there is really so much water on the ground, and she fears that her show may get wet if she walks to the cab. It really seems like Yang has a thing with toxic passengers. She further tells him that she knows a lot of people who will be very happy to carry her, but she hasn't given them a chance instead, she is giving him that chance to carry her. However, he doesn't care about how many people are queuing to carry her. He tells her that all those things she is saying don't matter to him, and all he knows is that he doesn't provide that kind of service. The best he can do for her is to give her an umbrella, and he has done so, so she should walk to the car by herself. He stretches the umbrella to her, but she calls him a dumb bastard. 
she collects the umbrella from him, and she reluctantly walks to the car herself. She tells him that even before their trip starts, he has already made her unhappy. She warns him that he shouldn't make her unhappy again till the trip ends because if he does so, she will make a complaint against him. The trip begins, and without giving a comment about the stupid words she has said, Yang tells her that she should fasten her seat belt because he is departing already. As they almost reach her destination, he tells her that when she arrives at her destination, she can get off with her personal belongings, but she refuses. She insists that there is too much water on the floor and she has gotten her shoe dirty. She claims that she can't walk back on her own again, and he has to drive the car upstairs for her to come down. Like driving the car upstairs, it's really impossible, and it doesn't sound reasonable to a normal person. He reminds her that he is driving a car and not a plane. How is it possible for him to drive her upstairs? He offers to drive her to the door outside her location, telling her that she is just a few steps inside the house. Instead of reasoning with him, she screams at him and tells him that she doesn't care. She tells him that he has to take her upstairs or she will leave a very a bad review for him and even file a complaint. She reassures him that she isn't joking about what she has said, and if he doesn't do what she wants, she will file complaints against him. It's not like he cares about their reviews and complaints, so he tells her that she should get down and file her complaints. When she realizes that her threat about filing a complaint isn't working, she tells him that she wouldn't leave the car unless he takes her upstairs. He switches off the car's engine, he comes out of the car, closes the door, and tells her to remain in the car for as long as she wants. He tells her that he is off for a late night snack and he is leaving her. She opens the door and comes out of the car. She yells at him and tells him that he should wait as he will get her complaints report soon. She picks up her phone and she types her complaints. He passes behind her and purposely splashes the water on the floor on her body. Then he enters the car to leave. He zooms off the car in a fast manner and splashes more water on her body. Ms. Zhang angrily jumped away from the roadside while calling him a derogatory name. Zhang, unaffected by her behavior, left the scene contently. He was reminded that there are all kinds of people in the world, including those like Ms. Zhang who feel entitled to special treatment. Despite her outburst, he remained at peace and tried to enjoy his cup of tea, but realized he had run out. He gets another notification from his portal. He receives yet another bad review along with a complaint. However, the system rewarded him with 50 grams of dried tea leaves from the rare Da Hong mother tree, which was exactly what he needed. The system instructed him to open the truck to claim his reward, and he eagerly did so. He is glad that the system really knows his worries and how they can solve them. He comments that it is really a great system. However, compared to the other rewards he has gotten, he wonders why his reward this time around is just 50 grams, and he says it is so less. However, the fairy tells him that although he doesn't know, the tea of Mother Tree Da Hong is more expensive than gold and the previous auction done for that tree was for 20 grams, and the auction price was 200,000, and now the tea is a rare item that money can't buy. He is so shocked that the tea is really expensive. 